Today's video is more of a consumer alert. It's about insulation in your home. And we have a local expert here to share some information with you. So here's Chris Basford, who is the local home expert here in our area. He is up to date with all the trends and stuff that you need to be aware of when you are buying or owning a home. Well, thank you, Chris, for being here. Um, we appreciate you sharing something that Brandy and I were not even aware of, so he's brought it to our attention. So Chris, talk to us about spray foam insulation. Okay. Um, spray foam insulation is a spray applied insulation that's used to uh, basically fill gaps and uh, as a moisture barrier as well and, and to insulate different parts of the home. And is there different types of spray foam insulation? There are. Um, there's an open cell spray foam and a closed cell spray foam. And most closed cell foams that people are, are familiar with are under the brand name like Great Stuff, um, where they fill gaps and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, closed cell is mainly used on the exterior of the home to uh, minimize water penetration or airflow. Open cell is uh, used on the interior of the home. So to be clear, which one's open cell? This is open cell. This is closed cell. And there's not really a very easy way to know. There's not really looking at the surface an easy way. Um, open cell and close, this is closed cell. Closed cell offers a higher R value around six or seven. Closed cell is about three and a half. Okay. Um, closed cell actually adds a little bit of structure integrity to your, to your home. Are there any concerns on the different spray foams? There are. Um, spray foams have been around for about 30 years and as building science has improved, um, we've learned a lot more about it. Um, one of the issues that people are seeing with uh, open cell spray foam now that's applied in the attic is uh, in a high humidity area, since it is open cell, and that's water, the that's the south, water can penetrate through it. So what, what we're seeing is the humidity from the home in the attic, if it's not well ventilated, migrates through the open cell spray foam and Everybody uses OSB as sheathing anymore in construction, and that actually holds moisture between the insulation and the sheathing. And over a few years, it begins to rot. So um, homes that have had spray foam for a little while are starting to see that now. That's kind of concerning. So, you, so there's some deterioration of the roof line. Of the sheathing, yes, can of you, the roof. And can you see this? Um, you don't really have an indication of it until you notice a problem and then it, it's pretty bad at that point. So Chris, what is the first indication that you have a problem? There are actually a couple. Um, you'll start seeing sometimes some condensation in the attic and then also as water migrates through this insulation, it'll discolor a little bit so you can see that there's some moisture present there. Um, a question, is this more to do with the attic space? Because I know is, this is used in other places of the house. Is this problem that is being seen as more concerning to the attic or like if they put it underneath the house? I don't know where that actually yeah. goes, but. It is mainly an attic issue. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people will use spray foam in the wall as well. Um, that's always, well, typically always covered with drywall, which is like a moisture barrier. So you don't get that migration through the insulation. I think you're mentioning that there's some problems potentially that getting a loan or and this is being red flag. Can you talk to us about that? I've read some articles lately. Um, if someone's wanting a line of equity on their house or, or something like that, if, if they know that mortgage in some way. Right. If they uh, if the mortgagee knows that they're uh, they have spray foam insulation, it's a red flag and there have been times when the mortgage company requires them to remove it, which is not an easy task before they would, would do a loan. That would, be, that would really upset me if I have the, in my house and I have to remove it or I'm selling my house and I have to move it and stuff. Um, wow, 
<laughs> that's pretty good. Well, thank you very much for the explaining the difference between the two types. And we thank y'all for having me. We appreciate you being here. I got a question now. Okay. So how long have you been, I think, ASHI certified home inspector? I started um, my home inspection business in 2015, and it took me about a year to become an ASHI certified inspector. So I've been inspecting for a little over eight years now. Okay, well, that's good. Um, call Chris if you need him, and I think this is great information. Mm -hmm. Um, make sure you have an ASHI approved home inspector like Chris Basford to be able to identify the different types of spray foam. It's always good to have an expert mm -hmm. to give you some additional information about it. Even if you own a home and you have it, you might want to get this checked out to see how it affects you. So. To stay up to date with all of our current and future videos, make sure you hit and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember, it's your home, your lifestyle, and, and we, we are your real estate team. team.